Ready, uh, go for launch. Five. Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. Anything can happen in the next half hour. Four. My friend, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. This whole thing is insane. Three. Quiet, please. I am analyzing. Where's the kaboom? Two. There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. One. Greetings, my fellow galactic travelers, and welcome back to Planet 8. This is your mission commander, Larry, speaking to you from our hidden base. Chief Engineer Bob is here by my side, as always, in the command center, and circling Planet 8 in our orbital spy satellite is Reconnaissance Officer Karen. And we are back. Welcome back to Planet 8. We have a very special episode today, one of my favorite episodes was our Road to the Apocalypse episode. And, and we're finally back for part two. Part two. Uh, we were playing around Mon Dieu, it's part two. And and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun going forward. So the premise, if you haven't watched or listened to Road to the Apocalypse, was us traveling throughout cinema and time to different apocalyptic uh, or dystopian futures. And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be apocalyptic. And what do we do? And, and from the last episode, if you haven't, or from our first episode of uh, Road to the Apocalypse, if you haven't watched it or listened to it, you should because Bob, Bob creates Dragon Mobile. And the Dragon Mobile <laughs> served him very well uh, in, in the Road to the Apocalypse. So, um, we're going to move forward, but at the end of the episode, I'll recap this and and remind remind you all: get on Twitter, Facebook, uh, make comments on YouTube, and let us know what you would do in these dystopian and or apocalyptic futures. So, and if you're not watching us on YouTube right now, I hear tell that Larry may have some props for this episode. So. Mm. Maybe. Larry, Larry, Larry may have lied to entice Bob and Karen to do this. <laughs> oh, <man>. What? <laughs> I got I'm so <laughs> sick of the lies. Um, but in, in any case, we are starting the tram. Please keep your hands and legs inside the tram. <laughs> Here we go. And boom. We pull up to what looks like a concert hall but there are these mechanical not quite robots not quite people not quite mannequins playing music what sounds like from the roaring 20s and this this mad scientist looking man who looks like vincent price has a little <laughs> pipe to the side of his He's like, nine lives, there are 12 lives, I mean 12. <laughs> Talking about the Chuck E. Cheese. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he blames Bob and Karen for the death of his wife, Victoria. Now, you manage to escape Five's house. You go back to your chateau or your hotel or your home. Getting ready for bed, and you start to hear a buzzing sound. <laughs> Turns out there's killer bees that Dr. Fives has released. Bob, what do you do? Killer bees? Killer bees. Big I, ones, too. It's laying in bed? You're laying in bed, lights out. You turn on the light, and you're like, ooh. Uh, I don't think there's much I could do other than pull the covers over my head and scream. <laughs> I don't think I have a can of raid nearby. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, that, hey. no, what, else, what else could you do? You look around the room. What do you have? Yeah, I should, I should have one of those, uh, fly, those electric fly swatters. 
and just start swinging it. <laughs> like a lightsaber. That's right. Zap, zap. Um, yeah. I, but knowing me, I'd probably be screaming under the sheets. Are, are you normally afraid of bees? No, my dad used to have beehives in the backyard, and they oh. would swarm and think. But, um, but killer bees, though, yeah, probably killer. Killer bees that are specifically programmed to sting my ass. Yeah, I would probably be uh, oh screaming under the sheets. It it doesn't help that he poured honey all over your sheets. I forgot to mention. So. Well, then I'm probably screwed. <laughs> Walker, what do you do? Well, let me say, this seems like a very finite apocalypse. Like just it's, basically it's for apoc it, it, it's yeah. our apocalypse. Right. right. It's, it's you know it's, yeah. a self apocalypse. However, I think at that moment I will grab my little igniter from my nightstand, which I use for the little candle to make the room smell nice, spring into the bathroom and grab the hairspray <laughs> and make a flamethrower to my ignite God. the bees. And this, set them on fire. This is epic. <laughs> now you know, they are keeping a candle in my room, obviously. You know, they may still swarm me and kill me, but at least I will go out, Fighting. you know, in a blaze of glory. Yes. So, would it bother you that in the adjacent room you hear Bob? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's it's like when you're in the airplane and the plane oh, is going down. They tell sense. you to grab the mask and take care of yourself first. So I have to take care of me. Yeah. And then I can try and, you know, help there Bob out. There you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the apocalypses are going to get bigger and more worldwide-ish now. That was... I would hope so. That was pretty... Go back to another personal. There's only That's... so many, you know, apocalyptic futures out there but anyway that's like the cupcake size version <laughs> <laughs> you find yourselves in a taxi cab but the cab happens to be on the planet mars you get dropped off this station <laughs> and you tell the guy you're looking for quattro <laughs> And, and they take you through this, this tunnel bypassing the little oxygen indexes. And this guy turns around with this beanie baby kind of <laughs> quattro. <laughs> Where's my... Uh... Is it prop time? I for hope it's prop time. Reaching for a prop. For those I'm not on YouTube, I'm reaching for a prop. And I don't have a beanie baby, so I'm using... A Pluto doll. <laughs> it doesn't quite have the intended effect. <laughs> <laughs> Although that would be pretty horrendous if I saw that coming out of someone's body. Well, what I tried to do is to get Jasmine to come up here and just kind of come up and go, <laughs> like, but that wasn't going to happen. So, yeah, she has better sense. Yeah. And so you notice someone who looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger's shooting and the glass breaks on Mars and the air starts getting sucked out. Karen, what do you do to try and stop getting sucked oh, out into the Martian? Are my eyeballs starting to blow starting up to, like yeah, ping pong to... balls and shooting out of my eyes? So I... So I'm going to look around and see if there's some sort of a, um, uh, uh, oh my God, what do you call it? Uh, this is really bad. I can't like think of the name of the thing. Um, an airlock somewhere ah. so that I can, you know, maybe get somewhere with some air or if there's a, a button to like drop the, uh, some sort of panel to shut off the, the loss of, of oxygen. Um, from the environment. So that's, I'm going to try and find some environment with oxygen in it to try to av avoid suffocation. Okay. All right. And, you know, you're, you're running out of air too. So you're... 
Yeah. Yeah. But you know, right. I've right. got to, I've got to find something. I can't go after Arnold. That's not going to work. Right. right? Do would. I have a weapon? Do I have a weapon or I'm anything? Sure. What kind of weapon would you like? Really large caliber uh, automatic weapon. And what are you going to do with it? Well, is Arnold still shooting everything up? No, nah, he's got sucked out into... He, okay, then it doesn't matter. I just, you know, maybe I'll shoot Quato because he's just <laughs> repulsive. And then I'll run and try and, you know, again, try to get the oxygen to oxygen to an oxygen source somewhere. Very good. Bob? Well, one, I'm not a big fan of public transportation. <laughs> I probably would not be in a taxi cab to begin with. I would have probably been driving the dragon mobile into there. <laughs> and if that's the case, I'm rolling the windows up in the airtight dragon mobile, which has a tank of oxygen in there. And I'm okay long enough to just drive out of the area or drive to somewhere that will hopefully be safe. Are you yelling, Karen, j jump in the dragon mobile? <laughs> and she's like, Darr. Where's Arnold Quattro? <laughs> She's too busy, like shooting people up. But I mean, if she, if she can stop for a minute and jump in, sure, <laughs> that would cut the oxygen supply. Uh, supply yeah, I love the dragon mobile. Oh my god! I'd have to know exactly where I'm going, and do I have time to get there with a reduced oxygen supply? Very Otherwise, it's Karen. Nice knowing you. See you later. You know that's how we roll on Planet Eight. It's like. All depends. Yeah. Do do what we got to do to survive. <laughs> it's it's a tough world. It's a tough universe out there. So, see now if if the dragon mobile had propellers on top of it, I could sh start those up, open the door, and tell Karen, "Get in the chopper." <laughs> who, who says it doesn't? Hey. It doesn't. Well, now it does. Okay, that's what we do then. So get in the <laughs> and then we fly off. All right. Very good. So we're back in the tram and find ourselves with these weird guns and swords. And Richard Dawson appears on the screen <laughs> telling us, Welcome to Running Man. They throw you guys in the little sleds, your bob sleds, and you're and and you land into the into the pit, and these these mutants and, and things start trying to like attack you. And funny enough, one of them looked like the Martian Arnold Schwarzenegger that you encountered. <laughs> bob, what do you do? <sighs> How many of these mutants are there? 20. 20? Uh, and there's are there weapons lying around or I'm just there? You you have three weapons attached to you or available to you, and you get to tell me what those three weapons are. Uh I would say three nuclear hand grenades. <laughs> And then I would just be chucking them all over the place. Chuck it, pull the pins, chuck them, and then dive into whatever entrance they came out of and hope that I survive. Well, that, that was quick and, and uh, thorough. That's, that's the only way I'm going to take out 20 mutants. Walker. Well, I better have a jet pack. Because if Bob is throwing nuclear hand grenades, I need to get my ass out of there. So I have a jet pack. But then I also have a laser device. Do you remember in Iron Man 2, when Iron Man and Rhodey were down in a sort of Japanese garden and all the drones showed up? And at one point, Iron Man just sort of spins around with this laser and cuts everybody in half. Yeah. I've got one of those. Okay. So whatever might potentially survive his nuclear hand grenades i'll be up in the air slicing and dicing everybody else that's teamwork for you yep well congratulations you have both thoroughly pissed off richard dawson oh we have something for his ass <laughs> <laughs> 
for another time. Ah, okay. Okay, we'll be back. We'll be He's back. Gonna make us guess the top five answers to what question? <laughs> <laughs> Survey says? No, no kissing. <laughs> now, this isn't really apocalyptic, but I thought it would be interesting to see where you guys would land on this decision. Um, you traveled through time with your first officer, your Vulcan first officer, through this machine called the Guardian. Mm -hmm. You go back in time. You meet Edith Keeler, trying to find your first or your uh, medical doctor, chief chief medical doctor who's suffered a overdose. You can either save Edith Keeler. You do that, just like the show, screw up, you know, timeline. Or you let the truck hit her, set time right. No more Edith Keeler. What do you decide to do? Oh, the whole, you know, love of your life thing. I mean, you really, even though it's been like, you know, a week or whatever. <laughs> what do you do bob well i would have to listen to my first officer if he's telling me that if she survives then history is going to be screwed up or future history will be screwed up for history yes as much as i would like joan collins i'd have to shove her ass out in front of that truck <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know. I don't know if I could find the love of my life within a week. So it's like, well, it was a fun week. Nice knowing you, but off you go. Yeah, not all of us are William Shatner. I mean, or or Captain Kirk. Take yeah. your pick. Um, what do you think you need to do there, Walker? So I agree with Bob. I listen to Mr. Spock. We go ahead. We let things proceed as they should so that you know, history follows the path it should. Spock and I jump back through the, the Guardian, and then we turn back around, look at the tricorder, figure out when it's time for Khan to appear. We jump back through, and we take Khan's ass out so we don't ever have to deal with that guy. <laughs> Wouldn't that change history as well? Well, yeah, but <laughs> boy, he was a real pain. You know, it, it's funny you should say that because on your way back, rather than landing on the planet with the crew, you actually land aboard this. No, no, sorry. You're not on the. Actually, yeah, you're on this bird of prey. And decades have passed and you're looking around like. And you hear that you know, the power starts fluctuating and you hear these sounds emanating from outside the ship that kind of sound like whale sounds, but there's this huge probe that all you hear is blub, 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 blub. <laughs> Yeah, keep the probe away from me, man. <laughs> Alien probes are not good. You find yourself back in San Francisco in the 1980s uh, McCoy and, and Scotty create transparent aluminum and see that was the thing it's like well how do we know Khan shouldn't have survived well, how do we know he didn't create transparent aluminum oh. yeah let's see what happens with that you have an opportunity to bring back pump back whales but going to be a caveat one of your crew members has to stay behind and they can't stay in society you got to beam them down to like a deserted island so they have no contact with humanity who of your crew do you transport in exile it could be yourself no no it wouldn't be me 
That's Probably easy. Chekhov. He's always left behind. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It's Chekhov. Oh, uh, you... Walter, I was hoping you guys would take a different route. Well, you need Spock because you're going to need him with help with the calculations and you don't know what else may happen. You need McCoy because if someone's injured, you know, you need Sulu to pilot the ship. You need Scotty because the engines. It, Uhura, okay, communications, I don't know, maybe, but I think I look at her as being a little more um, uh, capable and reliable than Jack. So. Well, see, what, you, what you really do is you go through that portal, you, you get a hold of Khan, <laughs> bring him back, make him part of the crew, and then leave his ass on the island. Now, okay, all right. Now, now let me ask you: uh, so, taking a step, or you hook him up with Edith Keeler and shove them both in front of the truck. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Take, my taking head. a step back, at what point in Khan's life do you re remove him from existence? And and you know, do you just shoot him in the head? Do you push him off a bridge? Is, is he a teenage Khan? Is he Khan? You don't want him in full power, so I assume he's rising in power at what point do you a teenager he'd probably be stronger than you so you'd have to get him as a little kid ah you don't want to do that <laughs> hey, kirk kirk defeated him as his adult you know prime physical self so i i think you you know you go after him well yeah you don't want him you know taking over the world but we ain't no kirk oh that's true okay kid <laughs> yeah. he's probably still outsmart us well if we have spock with us then that'll that'll help spock would probably be not be kosher with this plan though vulcans are stronger than humans it might be interesting to see spock and uh con duke it out not in that fake movie that they did it in but <laughs> in the original series oh now uh, that's interesting because Spock was okay with letting Edith Keeler die because that's supposed to happen. Yes. We were yeah, he would probably object to going back and killing off Khan. Yeah, I don't think we'd get very far with that. So maybe we leave Spock's ass on the island. <laughs> no, you yeah. need him to go back in time with calculations. Yeah, yeah, can't do it. Okay, but check right. off. Check off it is. Goodbye, Walter. So then we go off and make a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> we can get two aliens for one check off. Of course. Of course. Uh, keep your hands in the tram, please. As we move forward. Actually, yeah, it, it would be forward because it was future. Find yourself in a resort. Mm. You're not at the medieval portion of the resort. You find yourself in Westworld. In what? Westworld. Westworld. Okay. The original you Westworld. Say, say we would find ourselves in a resort. Yule Brenner. Suddenly, here comes Mr. Rourke and his con in disguise. <laughs> that would have been a good <laughs> segue. Uh, and you know, the first couple of days, you're you're fine. You're having fun, riding horses, having fights at the OK Corral, and then Yul Brenner loses his shit. <laughs> you and Walker, Walker and Bob, you're a team. You're in the Wild West. There's no dragon mobiles. There are, there are very, very fast horses. Maybe even a couple of Clydesdales. I don't know. How do you escape? How what what do you do to survive in this? So you would have to determine Yul Brenner's like weak spot. Now, does he have an energy pack on the outside like the Lost in Space robot? Nope. Where at any time you can just go and just pluck that out and boom. Yeah, that would be nice. Nope. He, he's like the robot in Westworld. He's just sashaying along with this. So 
we know that like his senses can be kind of tricked sometimes. Yeah, you do like know he... all the ins and outs of his programming, his yeah. hardware. Yeah, like he detects heat, so maybe we could kind of trick him. Maybe we could kind of ambush him somehow. Like we could set something up in an alley, and maybe he'd go after like one of us, and then maybe we could like basically napalm his ass, like dump some <laughs> some oil and stuff on him from a, a building and set him on fire. Because I think fire is the only thing that's going to really yeah, I think stop that him. Um, if one of us gets him into a duel, ah, distracts him, who's the bait? The right spot. The other can be up in a second story room and just push one of those old time player pianos right on his head. <laughs> Drop a piano on him. That, that's going to take a little. All the time. It's going to take a little muscle. I don't know. I like fire. Maybe well, it's, it's a like piano a, that's on fire. It's like Kirk moving <laughs> that big rock and pushing it over onto the Gorn. Yeah, a big rock he was pushing there. So okay, yeah. sure. And you, and you we'll would, sorry. Well, and we'll set it on fire. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we'll, would, set the, yeah, we'll set the piano on fire and throw it over on. Yeah. <laughs> Death by a flaming piano. He'll, he'll be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are dangerous. Got to survive. We are no. without. Out pity or or mercy. Don't don't want to mess with the planet eight through. I'll tell you guys that much. All right. Did you expect us to talk to him? No. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> well, he shoots us like Swiss cheese. I I was. I don't know. I didn't. I I didn't <laughs> know what you were going to do. <laughs> Flaming piano is just as good as anything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are our next stop is on the east coast of the future United States penitentiary known as New York City. You have been asked, well, you've been tricked to save the president of the United States who has been taken hostage inside New York City. Karen, they've mm -hmm. also, and Bob, injected you with a bomb that will explode if you don't complete the mission in a certain amount of time. How do you handle this, my friend? Well, I, I don't want to even ask who the president is. That's just too much to, to contemplate. So regardless, I don't really like the idea of somebody planting a bomb in my body. So I have to go rescue the president. Do I have any equipment with me? You have two pieces of equipment of your choice. Of could my choice. Could be a flamethrower. I know fire is a reoccurring thing in this, this uh, little adventure. Could be a no, no jetpack. No jetpack. Ah, no jet darn it. Okay. <laughs> All right. But I can have. Can it be a vehicle? Yes, it can be a vehicle. Let's see. Um, are Bob and I on our own, or are we going to team up? You're a team. Okay, so I won't take a vehicle because I'm pretty sure Bob's going to take a vehicle. Get in the chopper. Huh? I certainly will. <laughs> so yes, I gotta have like a let's see. Get in the I... chopper, we can fly in or drive in, either way. I'll have a, a laser sighted, you know, super powered pistol. And then uh some sort of body armor. Oh, that look that's an interesting uh oh it looks like a uh it is Mando rifle, yes. It's a Mando rifle. I, I don't have a oh, TV. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, so 
I would have a little body armor, a little weaponry. You, you, oddest thing, you bump into Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> He's willing to give you a ride in his cab. Of course, Bob just, doesn't like public transportation. I thought he was yeah. gonna like a PT cruiser. <laughs> I, I, I think I'll pass and ride in the, the dragon mobile. <laughs> We run into Ernest Borgnine and he has this like big sphere filled with souls. Oh. <laughs> Is his face melting? <laughs> Not yet. But we could suck everybody's soul into that thing except for the president and then bring him hey, back. Where's Eddie Albert? See, presidents have no soul, so I wouldn't have. <laughs> So that's uh that's I think how we would do it. Okay. Sounds good. Ernest Borgnine saved the day. Well, you're now crash landing in your ANSA spaceship in this body of water. You get out. What year was it? What did the chronometer say? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what, what you're looking at. You hear doesn't, these trumpets doesn't matter. playing and these half-naked humans running past you into these fields. Do you start running with them? Do you hide? But at this point, what do you do, Bob? <laughs> um, well, so you can't just start running with them because they're all naked. You got like spacesuits on, so... You're going to, like, stand out in front of everybody. Here comes the lobotomy. <laughs> um, I'd say, you know, you hide behind a rock somewhere. Hide behind a rock? What about you, Walker? Oh, yeah. You, or, you know, you, you could go into the water if the spaceship's already sinking. Just get one of those reeds and, you know, breathe through mm -hmm. the water there until everybody goes away. Right. You go back where, like, the waterfall is and just kind of hang back. Watch what's going on. You don't want to run with those morons. They're all going to get killed, basically. So, no, let them let them take the brunt of it. Hang back, see what's happening, assess the situation. And you know, you wouldn't go all the way out there without some laser pistols. <laughs> so you fight. could like stand back, let all the humans run. And this kind of like pick the apes off one at a time. Pew. Right. Sit there with your little, you know, cigar in the corner of your mouth and mm -hmm. just be like, you <laughs> damn dirty apes. <laughs> you, 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 with the lasers, you might end up killing like Zira and Cornelius. And... We don't know who they are. <laughs> we don't know You're what's going on. Either they're back in the camp. So. True, true. They're back in Ape City. Just a bunch of dirty gorillas on horseback. Take them out. Oh, uh, well, okay. All right. Fair enough. Now, Karen, I don't know if you've seen this movie or not, mm. but you're on this train in Korea. I have not seen this movie, but I've heard about it. Train to Busan. There's zombies coming after me. There's zombies. There's really fast, crazy, zombies. hyper zombies. Oh, crap. Yeah. And um, the little girl singing Aloha Oi gets to me every time. It's a, it's a good movie, Walker. But ho hopefully this will help you jump over to go see it. So here's the thing. You need to save this little girl. Oh. Man. Okay. Does she have a special serum in her body or anything? No, that... it, say it's your daughter. In the movie, it's the guy's daughter. I'll That's... pretend it's Campbell. It's... <laughs> <laughs> you gotta save your dog. Oh, for he those of you on YouTube, you just got to see Campbell. He's asleep on my lap right now. Okay. That works. Uh, and Bob, of course, you could pick between the turtle, the dog, whichever boat. Well, we'll go with Teddy. He's a whole lot faster than the tortoises. <laughs> <laughs> but Teddy doesn't have a shell. That's true. So it would, anyway, he, he does have the speed. The fur babies are in the first car. 
secure in their little cargo carry case. You need to get to them. You're in the food car, which is not quite the caboose, but not quite the middle either. What means do you use to get to the fur babies up front? You go outside the train and crawl along the side, on the top. Well, where are the zombies in this train? Are they in the in the train? They're in the train. Okay. So they're coming from the caboose towards you. Mm. But they weren't in the in the front cars, right, Bob? They were chasing them from the back forward. They were like all over the place. But, yeah, okay. but they were more it behind. It seemed like they were mostly attracted by sound. Mm. So you have if you're gonna be inside, you're gonna to have to go really slow and real quiet to get to the front. Or like I say, I would probably try to go up top and across the top of the uh the top of the train. How are you with heights? We're not going in any tunnels anytime soon. Yeah, no. <laughs> would you be okay running through the top of the train? Uh, well, you know, if there's something to hang on to that you can, like, you know, cl climb around or crawl on or whatever. Yeah, I have no problem with that. I used to get up on houses and help my dad put CB antennas on people's roofs Whoa! when I was a kid. Back when CBs, this this will tell you how old I am. He used to help people put CB antennas up on their roofs and, or Sometimes really big ones, they'd put in people's, they'd, you know, pour cement, put them in the yard. So, pretty cool. yeah, yeah, I didn't have any problem getting up on top of roofs and stuff. Based on the demographics that I see our podcast hits, none of our listeners are going to have a problem knowing what a CB antenna is. <laughs> 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 All right, my friends, we're, we're getting towards the end of our tour you wind up in this lovely country home. Oh, no, sorry. You wind up with Mr. Beamish from the Twilight Zone episode, Time Enough. Mm. You, uh, you friend him. He's not the last man on Earth, last person on Earth. Uh, you friend him. You see that he has no glasses. Do you help him find glasses? Do you do you just survival of the fittest? Do you what what do you do? How do you proceed in a world where there's only three of you and unlimited books and canned goods? Well, do do Mr. Beamish and I have the same prescription? Of glasses? You do. Okay, then then I might have to make some hard choices here. <laughs> so so if if there are no other no. glasses available to him other than mine or the ones I ha I have available, then I think he's out of luck. Yes, you it depends him? on his prescription. Because see, I don't wear glasses anymore. <clears throat> but I need cheaters to see up mm -hmm. So if he can make do with cheaters, then I usually have these stashed all over the place. So no, he he had like Coke bottle. Oh, that's yeah. right. he had the Coke bottle glasses. Yeah, his, his glasses were pretty. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'd have to see if we found another pair that would work for him, or maybe I could share a little. But... <laughs> for a minute i'm like okay uh if there's no fresh meat we might have to cook them uh, <laughs> I'm like oh my god who are these people well, well see it... if, he gets, if he gets glasses and he sits around reading books all day he's gonna start getting pretty plump <laughs> if we had to eat him well there'd be more of him to eat you see you know yeah, but, you know maybe you don't eat them all at a time one time I on a side here, I, I think at some point we should go back to the Twilight Zone 
and maybe do like we've done with like X Files. Take a look at like the first season, and and we each take a look at two episodes or something. There, there no. we, we Jazz and I are watching Twilight Zone episodes, and there's some gems out there that we didn't really touch on. But well, see, for me, it's like they're always having these one channel or another will always have a Twilight Zone marathon over some holiday weekend. And I don't remember what the last channel was, but they had one over 4th of July. And I swear to God, I've been watching Twilight Zone all my life. <laughs> and invariably, whenever they have these marathons, I'll always catch an episode or two that I've never seen before. That's cool. So I can either keep those surprises coming or I can just take my Blu-ray set out and just start binging my th way through the whole series. Well, well, see, that's the beauty of it, Bob, is you don't have to watch the entire season one. You just yeah. pick two or three, you know, season one episodes that you really like. Then you can keep binging your, or watching your uh, episodes when they, you know, Fourth of July, Labor Day, and, and whatnot, the marathons. There's, it, it's so cool because there's so many episodes that we're, Gonna get back to the apocalypse in a minute, kids. <laughs> uh Paramount has uh Twilight Zone. So Jazz and I will watch one or two episodes, uh, if not every night, almost every night. Huh. And there are still episodes where I'm like, oh man, I don't remember what happened. Like the giant alien, and it's an inflatable balloon, but there was like some prints on the car, and um yeah, so there's anyway, something to think about. See, I have completed my homework on the invaders. I know. I'm going to find something else to binge anyway. So you beat me and Larry to it. I've, so. like I said Baker's dozen. We're getting yeah. there, kids. Got Baker. like seven. I'm I'm binging my way through Rydine now. Rydine, that's a good one. You I started. Start I'm watching some of the Planet of the Apes TV show episodes. You don't ask me to do an episode on like Transformers. Because back when Transformers and GoBots and whatever was on, I wasn't watching those. I was watching Rydeen and Mazinger Z and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I was talking to a friend who was like, oh, do you watch anime? And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, anime is not quite my thing. And they got almost like offended. Like, oh, some people just too good for anime. I'm like, no, it's just not my thing. That's all, I, you know. You like what you want to like and don't like what you don't want to like. And, you know. I watch a ton of it, but I kind of got cut off once it started becoming like characters with blue hair and cat ears and <laughs> God knows what else. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm i from the day of like Yamato and Captain Harlock and Gachaman and stuff. Yeah, I watch it all the time. I'll still watch it. All right. But like I say, like what you're going to like. and But as oh. we as we move forward, I I think this is the last one. <laughs> I go over my list. All right, make it good. I have I have an honorary one or two here. It's and, based on some anime, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you wind up in the movie Them, and there are these giant ants. That in that in your demented minds should not be able to stand up on these little legs, uh, but here we go again. Are standing up on these little legs because when they're little ants, their body and their legs are the same size as when they're big ants, and so they should be able to support themselves and what. Anyway, no. you're not with the military but your Planet 8 experts on these types of incidents. What do you do to vanquish them? Can I have a samurai sword? Yeah, sure, you can have a samurai sword. Well, Karen and I both have samurai swords. We're going to run out there, and we're going to be just slicing off those little spindly legs. <laughs> They're going to be on the ground, not able to move because they have no legs. Now, and, now. and then we flood them, and because their their uh, what would be their like nasal openings are on the bottom of their thorax, they drown. 
Yeah, they've all fallen on their stomachs because we chopped their legs off. Yeah, because they. How did you? Do, how do you guys? Well, and the sword. <laughs> You're assuming that their their legs are like paper thin, you know. Th this is like body armor. They're These already having trouble standing on their legs. <laughs> They're very tired. We're just the legs. Out. The legs are hurting. These are these are are you know adamantium swords. See now, once we get adamantium. once we vanquish them, then. You can make me a sergeant in charge of the booze. <laughs> How do you corral them into a low-lying area that you're able to flood the area with all of them? Is it a lake? Do you blow we, up a dam? I mean, we just put some sugar out. <laughs> we put a little sugar out, and they just show up. And they we just, just leave. Show up? We leave some sodas open. <laughs> And they show up like they always do. And it you're just is, like. It has to be a big can of soda, though. These are yeah, huge. No, we'll have a nice picnic spread. Right. And they ruin it like they always do. So you just leave the stuff open. Well, come and there'll be a bunch of moms out there going, oh, man. And you just, no, no, ma'am, you need to get out of the area right now. But my kids are flying planes down in the aqueduct. <laughs> well, they're gone. <laughs> Sorry. It's too late. Oh my goodness. You you guys um and then we set them on fire. Yes. <laughs> Just to make roll, sure. Roll that flaming piano over there. Mm -hmm. Show it right in the middle of the of the whole stack. We hire uh uh Billy Preston. Oh, he's dead. No, we hire who do we hire to come out and play the flaming piano? Elton John's still around. Barely. I I know. I, he, did, I he put on a good show here. Elton. Elton, yeah. Were there ants? I couldn't see that well. Maybe. Maybe little ones. They weren't maybe. giant though, so you could. They weren't giant. Yeah. I, I knew I should have. I should have went with Kingdom of the Spiders instead of them. Next time. Then we could have tied in Joan Collins. We could have had Edith Keeler battling giant spiders, or just no, just a lot of spiders. Yeah. Like what? Empire of the Ants? I, oh, that I, was Empire. That's right. That was giant spiders. Kingdom of the Spiders was Shatner. Shatner. We could have brought them both together to well, battle spiders. We could, we could have teamed up with Shatner, and then we're un, undefeatable. Yeah. Well, let me let me write down here: Kingdom of the Spiders. <laughs> Giant spider invasion. See, when, now, giant spider invasion, you had that one giant spider that was, like, put on a VW with big pipe cleaner legs. So, you know, that kind of... That'd be fun to drive around, wouldn't it? That, that could be, that could totally be your free. mobile. Uh, Bob has the dragon walker, and you got the spider mobile. Nah, it's, Shoot webs out of it's it. A, it's a novelty. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you, I would I would love to have Shatner. Even, even you know, the man's still very... Uh, vibrant to take on any of these challenges he would be fantastic right? he might not be able to run around but he can still ride on horseback oh yeah oh, yeah we'll just always give him a horse in any challenge <laughs> he'll have like a horse and the option to like talk anything into destroying itself <laughs> <laughs> what was that story he would tell at conventions about coco the gorilla Oh, when Coco cupped his balls. Yeah. Yeah. They, I, they love you, to, hey, I, hey, love Coco, I love you, Coco. I love you. I love you. I love you, Coco. And he, I love you, Coco. I love you, Coco. I love you, Coco. Coco, I love you. Huh? Okay, get a little closer. I love you, Coco. I love you. And Coco reaches out. He grabs me by the balls. There. <laughs> Ever go see Shatner in person? Ask him to tell you the Coco story. I want to go see him at uh, Ticonderoga. He's there actually this weekend, but he goes out to that Star Trek tour two or three times a year now. Yeah. And I think that would be awesome to go do that. Uh, there guys... is an invention. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. We're, we're, we're done with the, we're done with the. So how, how did we do in the apocalypse? 
well in these mini apocalypti. I think we survived. Futures, you survived. Although I'm I'm still upset with the ants, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll get over my thing with it's them. Science. I don't think so. I you don't guys, think you'll ever you, get you, over you, it. You both survived to live through another apocalypse. Uh, the third one, we are going to have Kingdom of the Spiders and Empire of the Ants, but the third apocalypse is not going to be apocalypse. It's going to be the reign of the devil. You're going to visit the exorcist house, Rosemary's baby. Di no, just kidding. Oh, my God. I was going <laughs> to say. I was getting a little excited for that. <laughs> well, maybe we'll sprinkle a little a, a little of that in here. But anyway, you, you both did very, very well. Uh, like I said, those of you watching, listening at home, share with us where you would have differed, gone a different way. Um, you know, maybe you would have tried to make the ants your friends and pets and... Yeah. You know, have like an amusement park with ant rides. I don't know. Like riding those, on the back. Those people are foolish. Might have been something I did, but their legs are so strong that they could have carried all of us. Sure. They, Maybe they're, if they were cybernetic or, or cyborg <laughs> ants. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk to Andrew Fracknoy. Hey. He'll straighten you out. Ant, ant Man had that giant ant, his daughter. I can't remember the name of it, but that thing got around fine. Anywho. Well, it's just sitting there playing drums, so. <laughs> I, I digress. Um, Probably had we, to see a chiropractor. What were, uh, yeah. What were we talking about, though, before we uh, ended? The... I, I, was, I was just saying uh, Ticonderoga, Shatner at Ticonderoga. Yeah. I think it's got to be on the bucket. It's on my bucket list. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, here locally, there's a convention in San Francisco. And anyway, Kate Mulgrew is going to be there. And huh. it's been years since I've seen Kate. So I'm thinking of going out there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, turned down for another podcast interview. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Hayden Christensen's going to be there too. So oh, boy. Uh, we shall see. Um, yeah, but hey, um, We'll we'll get into the censor sweep, but what are you guys watching? One of the things I watched, if I may start, is that our friends at the Seven Star are putting out videos again. They have a new location. Uh, they haven't had a date uh, when they're going to open, but it's in in the South Bay. Huh. So I'm really excited. I'm I'm wondering if or when they open, if maybe we can do like a can't be live but some kind of a podcast just to huh. kind of welcome them back we had our listener party there years ago at the old location sounds cool. exciting they're back well we'd have to get all three of us there though yeah you never know you never know well and then maybe we can figure out a way to finagle a live podcast it, it would be good if yeah well, it would be good to have Kieran out here for uh, for the Godzilla Fest convention. Um, I think that is later this year. Awfully close, or maybe the same time as my overseas trip, though. So, yeah. well, then maybe we'll <laughs> next year. Damn! If only we had transporters. I know. Well, my friend. So, uh, Bob, what do you what are you watching? You kind of got into some of the me tv too oh well, i watched the uh finished watching the invaders so now i got a lot of time to binge uh right. yeah i mentioned Rydeen. i've been looking for subtitled Rydeen for a long time and i finally gave up on anything legit and got a bootleg off of uh, ebay on blue -ray. it's beautiful they have bootleg blu-rays now bootleg blu-rays wow and this is like the entire series, all subtitled. And I've been, I've, I'm about you know, 12 episodes into it right now. Forgot just how good that was, that series was. One of my favorites. So I'm watching Rydine. Um We've been watching The Boys. 
Yeah, boy. That, How does it get that farm episode? It's interesting, but it's a hard, hard show to watch. That was brutal. Yeah, but I decided I thought, not to watch this season just because last season there were so many like, uh, I thought, gross I think out things. It was so good. Yeah, especially playing Old McDonald had a farm over the over the end credits. I was laughing my head off. It was rough. Um, what else are we watching? We're watching the Acolyte, but it's just kind of like one of those go nowhere. Star Trek miniseries things that I don't know. I'm waiting yeah. for it to have a point. Yeah. I'm not getting much out of um, the Acolyte myself. Um, other than that, um, probably try to finish up Pennyworth and then we've been watching uh, Skywalker Ranch or Skywalker Skinwalker Ranch. Skywalker Ranch. I watch the Skinwalker Ranch. So that's uh that's been pretty good so far. Cool. How about you, Walkie? Well, like I said, been trying to catch up on invaders. So I got about seven episodes, I think, as of this weekend. Watching a few episodes here and there of that Planet of the Apes TV series. <clears throat> and I think it's funny, when I was a kid, I I watched it, but I didn't really get into it, which is funny because I was such a big apes fan. But I think it was because, like, even back then, it kind of bugged me, like, oh, the, the humans can talk. Things didn't quite match up to the, the movies. But now I kind of look on it as like being an alternate timeline. You know, it's like a little different and it's kind of neat. But I think they were really hindered by being episodic and and you know each episode had to sort of stand alone so they couldn't do any kind of continued storyline so they it, no, it was almost no, like no series back then though exactly and and i think the it's the same as like you know the fugitive the hulk a lot of these shows it, it just feels like it's almost the same story over and over again they're on the run they come into like a little village they meet some people there's a problem they resolve it then they're on the run again I think it, you know, it would have really benefited if they could have told an ongoing story and had like a goal, like, oh, we know we have to get to, you know, this place where we will get some technology that will help us figure out how to get, you know, to some other place where maybe we'll find a ship or, you know, if they had like a goal, it would have made it like a little more interesting. If I was, um, uh, I'm on a couple of different Planet of the Apes Facebook page groups or whatever. And one of them was talking about the series recently and said that the reason why it only lasted a season was because the network put it up against uh, Sanford. Sanford and Son. Yep. And that yeah. killed it in the ratings. Yeah. I Guys, I'm to pick something up for the censor sweep. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, know you, you wonder. One of our ape talk. I wonder why they would make a decision like that, right? I mean, I guess they had to put something up against Sanford and Son, but uh, why they thought like alternate programming, like sure, Planet of the Apes fans are not probably not going to watch Sanford and Son, so maybe we get we pick up that part of the audience and bring them but, over. But yeah, I remember, it, you know, back then there weren't that many sci-fi shows that they could pair it up with anything, like have a sci-fi night or something. Yeah. So uh, I, I have no idea what the lead in was to Planet of the Apes. That's a good question. I'm sure that somebody has got it, you know, somewhere out there on the Internet. But, An old um, dusty TV guide somewhere. Yeah. But I, I, I knew when I was a kid, um, I think I got to watch it most of the time. But I also remember us watching Sanford and Son. And we only had one TV for a long time tape one and watch the other it was like well now today yeah you record to stuff back then. yeah we couldn't we didn't get a vcr for a, a long time like the 80s i mean for me i was always i would always lean towards sci-fi or whatever and there weren't that many on so it's kind of like hey you know planet of the apes is on tonight or six well, minutes man or whatever you know yeah, it was always whatever my folks wanted to see. So, see. well, yeah, I mean, the only it, luckily we had two TVs, 
of course they were both black and white but we had two tvs so I was, we had one and it was Angela. black and white what, what i want to know is when did i start walking like sanford from sanford and son it's like my hip hurts my knee goes out and i'm like I and in my mind i'm like damn it like when did i start making a noise every time i got up or sat down i don't know when did that happen when did i start grunting <laughs> but uh let's see yeah so watching invaders planet of the apes um a bunch of mainstream stuff. I'm watching House of the Dragon, which I don't think either of you are Game of Thrones people, are you? Uh, well, I watched so, the original, but after that, it's like... It, it's interesting. I mean, this is sort of a hundred years or so before um, Game of Thrones, so it's kind of interesting to see, you know, some of the history and stuff. And there, there's now with more dragons. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of dragons fighting dragons and other stuff. So... It, I don't know. It's it's enjoyable. I just think it, the impact of Game of Thrones when it came on was like so huge that you can never really match that. Um, but it's it's an enjoyable show. And Maybe then I just someday I'll watch Game of Thrones. I kind of like Star Trek Discovery. It's a hundred years before. It's enjoyable. Uh huh. Sure. I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast before. <laughs> What's that? I don't know if I've mentioned this before on the podcast, but you will never guess what TV show my daughter and her husband are binging. Lost in Space? Out of all the choices they have on streaming and the internet and everything else. Discovery. They've been lately, they've been binging on Mannix. <laughs> Man, which I've got the whole series on DVD. I told him, Well, if you lose it on your streaming channel, you can borrow my DVDs. But wow. I'll have Manix, but I just, I never, you know, they, it was before she was born, so I never really introduced her to Manix. So it's That's like funny. Mike Connors, how they, how they found it, how they discovered it, and how they started watching it. I have no idea. If oh, you know, wow. Manix, the first season of Manix. He actually works for an agency and he's sent out on all these missions. Huh. And then when the second season started, that's when he got his own private eye practice. And, huh. you know, Peggy came in as the secretary. Peggy. And yeah. all that. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, quite surprising. People, people find like stuff. Martin production. I mean, yeah, same as the invaders. Yeah, my it's, mom loved you know, that show. They could have easily found Rockford Files or Starsky and Hutch or something mm -hmm. else, but no. The, the algorithm will steer them in that direction. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to have to sit them down and have them watch The Day the World Ended. <laughs> With Mike, Touch Connors. Touch Connors, yeah. There you go. Uh, you know, I'm watching the acolyte and i was one more episode to go there are elements of it that i like but yeah i don't know what their end game is on this uh so we'll see um and then we're watching um some older films like we started watching the omen i love the first omen mm -hmm. one of my favorite movies and so we're like well we haven't seen two and three for a while so we watched two, it was okay, and three was um, still watching the old Battlestar Galactica or the reimagined Battlestar Galactica. That is, if you have not seen that series, Katie Sackhoff, Edward James Olamos, you guys really need to, listeners. I watched it a long time ago, the, the whole thing. I didn't watch it when it was on. Uh, this customer of mine, when I was doing AV installs, said, oh, you got to watch uh, Battlestar Galactica. And he like burned me the first season. And I watched it. It was good. So then I started going by and the others. So I kind of binged them all on DVD. But um, it was really good. Yeah, it, it still is. It, it really holds up. Um, and that's about it. I mean, you know, just watching stuff for the podcast. I like, got to start watching Invaders again. And, uh, we did watch uh, 
Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, or whatever. What did you think of that? It wasn't bad. I didn't mind it. So I like Stranger Things, so at least I like the kid. Huh. Um, and, it, you know, it's cool to see the uh, the old folks back, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and Ernie Hudson. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was good for what it was. It was kind of a little nostalgic romp for a couple hours. Cool. All right. Okay. Uh, Walker, what do you have for the censor suite? I have a couple of things here. Now, I had a birthday. I'm not going to say which birthday, but yeah. I did have a birthday. Happy birthday. Another trip around the sun. So I got a number of presents, but because this is a podcast about geek stuff, I will share the geeky things I got. And these are both from Commander Larry, so thank you very much. You're this very is a a very cute little book called the Star Trek Book of Friendship, which you may or may not be able to see. Oh, there you here go. On YouTube I'm has really... very nice illustrations by um, J.K. Woodward, who's done a bunch of Star Trek comics, and it's all about different friendships within Star Trek, different characters and their friendships, actors. It's sort of very nice. And then this thing I almost bought myself a few weeks ago, so I'm very glad I didn't buy it. It's Marvel Comics mini books. So it's a bunch of books. And these, I actually had a couple of these as a kid. My brother got them, but they were actually yay tall, like an inch tall, tiny right. books. All the pages would fall out. You would get them out of a gumball machine. <laughs> and they've recreated these books only in like, you know, six inch size books now let me pull one of these suckers out of here so they recreated these little books only as bigger books so you can actually look at them and you can see the little illustrations so it's kind of neat to have those books recreated Are and then they have black and white or in color they're in black and white. And then they have a separate book that explains like how the books were made and why they were made and all this stuff. And it's kind of funny. They have one for Thor, Spider-Man, Hulk, Captain America, Nick Fury. And then the last one is Millie the Model. Not Iron Man, not Submariner, Millie yeah. the Model. So anyway, kind of funny. So now, yeah. They by Marvel artists or is this kind of like a... Uh knockoff type thing you know it's kind of hard to tell um i have to read the little book and find out i guess who drew the the pictures um because the art's very basic because uh you know you were looking at these one inch drawings so i think they didn't want to have too much detail it's just very simple line art um so yeah i'll, I'll take a look and see who actually is credited but yes, thank you, Mr. Larry. I appreciate the presence. Very welcome, my friend. Bob, what do you got for us? Well, I would be amiss if I don't talk about Godzilla Fest first. Uh -huh. uh, let's see, this episode will be out on the 22nd? Second. Indeed. Ooh, one day after. <laughs> so there's all the fest film festival of the Balboa hearing in the future yeah about the past hopefully you all enjoyed that <laughs> <laughs> otherwise we've got the Godzilla fest convention coming up in september at japantown in san francisco and i'll talk about that more as we get closer we're we're like this far away from confirming the guests for that one huh. and it'd be a big one huh. and uh We've got dealer's room, we've got panels, we've got demos, we've got a meet and greet and a sake tasting and a, oh. a big movie night and just tons of cool stuff. But if you go to GodzillaFest.com, probably on the 22nd, I would not have had a chance to take down the information on the film festival yet, mm -hmm. but that and the Japantown convention will both be on there. You can check them out. And uh, so that's coming up. And like I say, I'll talk more about that as we get things confirmed. And uh, I did pick up an item. I actually got into a lottery with Funko of all places. I'm not really a big like Funko kind of guy, 
But once for a while, if they come up with something that I really enjoy, I will pick it up as a novelty. So they have these things called jumbo chans, and they're basically styled after old Japanese uh, cartoon ad characters. And uh, they did, well, the first one I saw that I got on the lottery for was Gachiman. And it was Ken the Eagle, and it was like really pretty cool. And so I said, well, I'm going to get in on this. So as soon as I entered that lottery, then another lottery popped up. And I was like, well, you know, I don't know if I can afford both. But it's a lottery, so with my luck, I'll either get neither or maybe I'll get one. And so I ordered, I entered the second lottery and I won that one. Nice. Now, I won, basically, I won the chance to buy this thing. It's not like I won it and it was free. But if you're looking on YouTube, you're going to do this like it was like Planet Rising – and it was actually hook him up at speed racer so both are tetsunoko characters so uh i was able to get speed there he is he's like 14 inches tall so he's pretty good size he's big getting back here towards me that's so you can get the scale and so yeah i got speed racer so cool. it's bigger than the uh, the jumbo Funko things, but uh, and it's pretty it's pretty heavy. It's made out of a pretty thick vinyl, so it's uh, pretty dang cool. That's awesome. So uh, well, I have a little something from one of my favorite movies. <laughs> Funko Boy. I'm not a big Funko Pop guy, but we all say as we buy these things. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm a Phantasm fan. It's very hard to find uh, Phantasm figures. Uh, so, and and for people just listening, that was the tall man, right? For people Phantasm. listening, right? But he's not very tall. He's not he's very little. Tall. He's, he's wee. Tall he's a wee. Fact, Speed man. Racer is taller than the the than the tall man. Yes, he is. He's he's a big one. So, um, yeah. So it you know he's holding the little silver ball and <laughs> he's got the little knives popping out of it. <laughs> so Can you press a button on the back and here and say, "Boy, boy. no, you got to do that yourself." Um. Yeah. So, um, I I I have it tucked away, so it'll have to wait till next podcast. But our good friend, uh, friend uh, Jeff Winkle, uh, touched up another uh, collectible for me that survived the fire. Huh. Uh, I I put so much elbow grease into that thing, and I just couldn't clean it up. And he went in there and he worked his magic, and I I am blessed for it. So stay tuned. For our August 8th episode, kids. Huh. And, uh, you know, if you're not following us on YouTube, follow, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Um, and we appreciate it. Of course, we're out there on Facebook, uh, blah, blah, blah. Facebook <laughs> Instagram, uh, Twitter, X, if you will. Um, anyway. I don't know if any of us are on TikTok or. Uh, yeah, no. Did I am not. Talk or threads or all that stuff. Um, but hey, that's okay. We're, we're up there enough. Threads? You can find us. You keep trying to drag me onto threads. I don't have I'm enough time in the day. About. I'm not going to thread anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, my friends, this brings us to another conclusion to another fun episode listeners friends we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did this is planet eight signing off take care of yourselves until we meet again there you go so i didn't time it but i think it was a little over an hour an hour and 14 minutes oh okay that's what i got change. aaron changed so we did very well
surprised we got to that. We, far. Uh, stop the recording. On that note, this will conclude this transmission from Planet 8. We would like to thank all of our intergalactic audience for listening. Be sure to head on over to our website at www.planet8podcast.com where you can get more information on this episode's topic. For more conversation, find us on Twitter at Planet8Cast or on Facebook at facebook.com slash planet8podcast. We want to thank you guys for tuning in each and every episode. We look forward to your input and opinions. Until next time, this is Planet 8, signing off. End transmission. By George, he's got it. It is the end.